So you've decided to hang up a mirror in your nursery, but it doesn't have that wire that attaches to the little hooks. So now you have to install it yourself. You've already thought ahead and weighed the whole thing and realize it weighs about as much as that fish you definitely totally caught. So you go and buy a wire that can support a little bit more than that. It's all you need for this project. And something to cut it with. First things first, gotta lay that puppy down so no one gets hurt. And now you've realized this wire, much like children, is a bit more difficult to manage than you sign up for. Luckily, you can just use something heavy on the end of it to keep it from bouncing around. I'm using books, but you should definitely use that fish that you totally caught. Give it a few safety tags. Now here's the part we're all here for. To make the knot, you gotta push the wire through the top of the hook and pull it through, leaving about six inches of slack on the end. Next, wrap the end of the wire behind the main wire, take it down and around, and feed it down and under the hook right next to the first loop you made. Make sure the end of the wire stays above that second loop. I know it looks like a pretzel, but you're wrong because it's actually called a cow hitch because it looks exactly like what a cow looks like. I know I could use other knots, but this is the most common one I've seen. I could use a fisherman's knot, but that would involve me needing to actually be good at fishing, which we all know that I'm not. Give it some good tugs, make sure everything's tight. To complete this, we'll just take a shorter end of the wire and start wrapping around the main wire a few times, something like five or so times, just keep wrapping and keep wrapping until you've got a good amount of wire. Since it's steel wire and there isn't a lot of movement here, we don't need to tuck this in anywhere. You just pull it nice and tight and give it a little bit of a snip. Now let's do the other side. Just measure out a little bit more of the length in the frame, but not too much more. You'll see in a second that I probably used too much slack. At this point, you can move your weights out of the way and just cut your wire to length. Just remember to leave about six inches on the end of your wire and cut it off. So let's do this again. You just push the wire from the top, leaving that six inches on the end, then wrap it back behind the main wire, bringing it all the way down, and then coming back up to the hook again. Remember to bring the wire back up in front of the loop you just made, making the wire go parallel to the main wire. I realize it doesn't make much sense when I'm describing it, which is why you should be watching it instead. Give it a good tug, and you can even use some pliers to make sure it's extra tight. Take that loose end and wrap it back around the wire five or six times, or eight times or 27 times or more. I won't tell anybody. It's a good idea to make sure this wire is nice and snug around the loop before it, kind of push it down and yank on it to make sure it won't come unraveled, then give it a snip. As you can see, I probably should have used less wire to make it more tight, but as long as the wire isn't peeking out at the top, you should be okay. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that's to hang this bad boy. Remove all the decorations from the dresser very carefully because your wife is watching, and just find the stud and mark it. Which, if you don't have a stud, you can use one of these drywall anchors. Drive in a screw, hang up the whole thing, and make sure the mirror is nice and straight. Now you've got a mirror hanging up where you can see yourself, which I can't recommend doing, but at least now you know how to attach a wire to a mirror, which isn't such a terrible thing. 